Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. And if you stand for Cain's, let us stand for the reading of God's infallible and unadulterated, in unchanging, unchangeable word. Amen. Minister Moses, time me for the next 50 minutes so we can close on time. I promised you on Wednesday that we have to avert lateness. Lateness slows down progress. Amen. So by 11.30, we have to close. Do you agree to that? Yeah. Clap your hands for Papa. Clap your hands. So Papa, no long talk today. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, quickly. Habakkuk chapter 2. Let's read together. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and I shall answer when I am reproved. Verse 2, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Number 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, uh, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it. Look at someone and say, wait for it. Because it will surely come it will not tarry. Verse 4. Look at verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Father, speak to us. Minister grace to us. In Jesus' mighty name, clap your hands and take your seat. Amen. Our objective this morning is to understand the secrets and the keys to vision fulfillment. To understand what it takes to fulfill vision. Amen? Amen? By way of introduction, I need your focus and your attention. By way of introduction, please understand that it is imperative to note that the major thing about vision is not receiving it. The major thing about your vision, your goals, your objective is not receiving it, but it is fulfilling it. Look at someone say, but it is fulfilling it. It is not possessing it, but it is realizing it. Whatever God has placed in your heart to achieve, to undertake, to do, it's not about receiving the inspiration to do it, but making it happen. Look at someone said, 2020, make it happen. Understand fundamentally, ladies and gentlemen, that those who receive vision are many. Those who receive vision are many. But those who achieve vision are few. Praise the Lord. Those who receive vision are what? Those who receive vision are many. But those who achieve vision are very few. In life, what is important is not the starting of a thing. But it's important. It's not the start of a thing. But the finishing. What? It is what? The finishing. Am I talking to somebody here? The truth is, hear this. There are many God originated visions which never saw the light of the day. That is why you don't have to kill yourself this year. Praise the Lord. There are many God-originated vision that never saw the light of the day. Either because the people didn't know what to do. Or they were not willing to do what it takes to bring the vision to pass. I don't know what your vision is for this year. But I believe that everybody has an objectivity for 2020. Some of you want to get married. Some of you want to go to school. Some of you want to start your own building. Some of you want to have more children. Some of you want to start 
a, a, a very sole proprietor business, you want to go into entrepreneurship, whatever it is, there are some few keys that God has placed in my spirit for you for the realization of your vision. Praise the Lord. I want you to be hungry tonight. I beg your pardon, this morning. I want you to look at someone and say, be hungry for knowledge. There are keys. There are mysteries. There are principles to move your vision from conception to fulfillment. And these are the secrets I want to share with you this morning. Number one, let's go back forward. In 2020, ensure that the vision is valid, authentic, and worthwhile. Whatever God has placed in your spirit, whatever is your heart desire, whatever you are trusting God to achieve, ensure that the vision the goal is valid, authentic, and worthwhile. For instance, you cannot envision to steal someone's house and make it your own. Is that valid? Is that authentic? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's not valid. It's not authentic. It's not worthwhile. Three things are involved here, please. Three things. In 2020, ensure that there is a God factor in the vision. Number one, A, ensure that there is a God factor in the vision. How does this vision I have affect God? What does it mean to God? Praise the Lord. God factor. Say God factor. That's why the people have placed a demand on the grace of God. I'm going back there tonight. The people are hungry. The people are hungry. And when people are hungry, you have to feed them. Am I talking to somebody? Say the God factor. The God factor. How, how does it affect God, my brother? How does it affect God? One, B. Ensure that the vision is not about selfish pleasure gratification, name of fame. Selfish pleasure, gratification, name of fame. Whatever you want to do this year, whatever you want to achieve this year, ensure that it's not for your own selfish pleasure, gratification, name of fame. One, C. If you want to ensure that your vision is authentic, valid, and worthwhile, then ensure that the vision is strong on regarding impact on humanity. The vision is strong on regarding impact on humanity. Impact. If I go to heaven today, I'll be very fulfilled. If I die today, I'll be very fulfilled. At my young age, I have impacted millions of people all over the world. I was preaching in Takra and I was crying whilst I was preaching. People thought that I was under the anointing of God. But I saw young men who came to the service. All, all, all their dream is to see Bernard Taylor. All their dream. Mommy, Papa, all, all they dreamt a young man came to me crying and said, I have prayed to meet you. You have been my mentor for seven years. Some came to me and said, you have been my mentor for ten years. I've seen you on the Facebook, on the social media. All I dreamt about is this day. Hungry for God. Hungry for God. Pastors who listen to our Facebook Live. We started Facebook Live from 2018, 2017 with phones. Officially, we came Facebook Live. But from 2018, September, when we did prophetic activation, pastor walks up to me and said, man of God, I, I have to drag my service on Sunday so that I can listen to you teach. Then after you teach, I pick the notes and I can go and preach it. 
I, I was humbled. I was crying. I was humbled. I said, what kind of, what, what, what kind of honor is this? One young man who is called Bernard like me, he's somehow connected to us. He also connected to um, uh, Mr. Fua. He calls me the REM connector. He says that he served God for, at his young age. He has never felt God's presence like the way he felt God's presence on Friday. Everything you are doing in life, the end must impact somebody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My father in the Lord was advising me and said, when, when, when this man of God died, Reverend Ousu Tebri, when he died, he had over 400 churches. And all the churches are, are, are vanished. Are you listening to me? All the churches are what? 400 churches, all of them are gone. Not even one, including the headquarters. And so he was advising me that we have to raise genuine sons who can carry the baton. And we have to make impact on the right people. Your vision must make impact. Amen. Say your vision must make impact. Whatever you want to achieve, make sure that it helps somebody. It's not for your personal gain. You are called to be a blessing as God blesses you. Amen? There is a man called Henry Ford, the founder of automobile that is called what? Ford. In his years, what happened was that cars in Michigan were very expensive. The common people, the average people could not buy. So he had a vision that I'm going to make cars, automobiles, vehicles that will be less costly, less expensive, so that the poor can also drive. He put in millions of dollars just to make sure that somebody who is known in the society to be called poor can also drive. And today, we see cars everywhere. We see the average people able to buy a car because a man called Henry Ford became the pay setter. Whatever God blesses you is not for you. Look at someone say, let your vision affect somebody else. Number two, how do we manifest vision? Ensure that you maintain clarity with the vision. For the next six months, I know my target. Maintain clarity. Some of you have about five things on your table at the same time. So you are confused. You don't know whether you are renting a house or you are starting your own building or you are getting married. You can't even tell whether you are opening a shop. There's no clarity. Look at someone and say, have clarity. Ensure that you maintain clarity with the vision. Why must I maintain clarity? Take notice of this point. What is not clear to you has no right to be clear to anyone else. Look at someone and say, what is not clear to you has no right to be clear to anyone else. Yesterday I was so humbled when my friend called me, Dr. Philip I from London. He's going to start Power Monday services. And he says to me, man, Bernard, your boys played at Sam and they were fantastic. Clap your hands for my brothers. Clap your hands for my brothers. He says, that how, how, how do you go about it? I said, we are not the perfect ones. But some people look at us and they see us to be perfect. That's why you have to improve yourself. Improve upon yourself. And he was getting ideas. This is a man who has written over 70 books. Agabas, he has written, he lived in UK, a very exposed man of God. And he's impressed by the way our musicians, our singers ministered at CEM. He watches us, I'm sure he's even watching now. And he's asking for ideas, for clarity. Look at someone say, be clear on your assignment this year. Be clear on what you want to do. Because what is not clear to you has no right. To be clear to anyone else. Number two. To be. What is not clear to you. Is not there for you. 
If it's not clear to you, there's nothing to hold on to. If it's not clear to you, you don't know your destination. Where are you going? Um, let me tell you, in 2017, I was flying from South Africa. I went to preach for Dr. Adams at Dijon. And I went through Atlanta, going to Florida. So, coming from South Africa is a drug zone area. And they see the way I've been in, going in and out of America. I got to Atlanta. I'm going to immigration. And they asked me, where are you going to? My flight is to Florida. But I have to go through New York from Atlanta. I said, I'm going to New York. They said, what, what's your final destination? I, I forgot. I said, New York. Ah, they looked at the ticket. They saw that the final destination is Florida. They said, which hotel are you going to? Rafi. Praise the Lord. Then I began to fumble. In, at the immigration of America, when you fumble, you are dead. So, how can a gentleman who is dressed in suit, nice, well haircutted, nice, and you don't know where you are going? So, they pulled me aside to the inner chamber. Mrs. Bewu. Immediately, they told me to switch off my phone. Then I called my mom. I said, Mama, Mama, what's my baby's room? What's my baby's room? What's my baby's room? What's my it, the whole world, I saw for no musra dear pa. I saw for you who force me be a. I was crying because that room, if you go, is a place of no retreat. No, this this place is retreat and surrender. They kept me for for thirty minutes. They searched me. That's when they took my mobile phone and they they unzipped my phone. Say they unzipped the phone. My facial recognition, they made it useless. My password, they made it useless. Sometimes, you know, we men, we archive messages. So I have archived some messages because of immigration. They went straight to my archive and they, were, they saw a message whereby I was busy doing business. I like business for ministry. Doing business. I want this hotel. When I come and preach, they blah, blah, blah. They say, ah, you say you are coming, you are coming to Florida for holiday. But we have seen this. I said, how do you open it? He said, this is America. What was the problem? I was not clear on my destination. If you are not clear on your destination, then you don't have the right to get there. Clap your hands on Jesus. So you must be clear. If you are not clear on what you want to achieve in 2020, you don't have the power to get there. Praise the Lord. How do we manifest vision? Number three, ensure to plan for the vision. Plan for the vision. That is why on a Sunday morning we will not be jumpy and jumpy and jumpy. We share wisdom. Say wisdom. Ensure to plan for the vision. Vision is knowing where you are going. Planning is knowing how to get there. There are people that knows where they are going, but they don't know how to get there. Every lie, everything about them is GPRS, Google. Sometimes Google can delay you. I was going to preach for Prophet Bernard. Also, I had forgotten my bearings, so I put in the uh, GPRS Google. You, you, will, you will wonder where it took me to. It, it delayed me. So this woman who talks you are five minutes. That woman can go mad at times. There are people who knows where they are going, but they don't know how to get there. They want to get to 18 Junction. Am I teaching here this morning? But they don't know how to get there. So, vision is knowing where you are going, but planning is knowing how to get there. How are you going to get married without a man? And you have a prophecy. Which means that there are certain colognes you have to start buying. You have to detox. Detox your skin. You have to become sharper and increase your contrast. If you are dark, find a very powerful skin lightening that will make your skin nice. Look at someone and say planning. If you are getting married and you dress like you are 75 years old. How can you get there? Am I talking to somebody? So vision, take notes. Number, number three A. Vision without planning is dreaming without reality. 
Vision without planning is dreaming without reality. Praise the Lord. Say plan it. If you are a man and you are married, you should know your wife's soft spot. You should know where to touch. The buttons to touch where there will be peace in the house. Plan. Vision without planning is dreaming without reality. 3B. Until, watch this, no matter how fantastic your vision is, until it is committed to work, until it is committed to a workable plan, frustration is inevitable. 3B. Am I talking to somebody here? No matter how fantastic, how beautiful your vision is, until it is committed to a work plan, frustration is inevitable. I, I happen to be in the same flight with my good friend, Reverend Dansa. And I've not seen him in over 10 years. He was flying from Takrady. So he was with someone. I said, Madam, excuse us. I want to talk to this man of God. He was talking to me about one major prophet in this land. And I kept quiet to listen. I'm a good listener. He's listening. He was teaching me his strategies. How this man of God is making impact. Stressless impact. Planning. 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 Say planning. One major thing that he said that hit me. He said, this man of God can lay on the altar for 12 hours without moving. 12 hours without moving. I said, my God, I need to increase my prayer tenacity. Planning. How can I get there? How can I get the shop? How can I get it done? How can I complete it? How can I make it happen? Planning. Otherwise, frustration will be inevitable. What does planning include? The question now is, what does planning include? Am I blessing somebody here? Planning is identifying the right approach. Identifying the right approach to the realization of the vision. So this year, we are not living our lives biara biara. Anyhow, whatever comes, no. We are slow but sure. Praise the Lord. Planning is identifying the right approach to the realization of the vision. What is the correct approach in achieving the vision? What is the correct approach? How can I make this happen? What God has put in my heart, my desire, my dreams, my objectives, whatever I want to achieve for 2020, what is the correct approach to making it happen? How can I do it? When a vision lacks the correct approach, reproach is inevitable. When a vision lacks the correct approach, reproach is inevitable. What does planning include? What does planning include? Planning is allocating time schedules. To identifiable causes of action. Planning. Is allocating time schedules. To identifiable causes of action. Look at somebody and say, if you don't plan well, you will fail. When do you want to start? And when do you want to finish? It's planning. Planning. You are 32 years. For the next 80 years, you are 35 years, 36 years. For the next four years, five years. Okay. So I'm trusting God that I'm going to get married in the next one year. Then within four years, I produce two babies. So by the time I'm 40, I'm done with giving birth. Then I'll pick up my master's program for two years. Then I'll start my own business. Planning. When do you want to finish? When do you want to start? Planning. Say planning. You have to plan. You have to plan. Praise the Lord. Look at someone say, you have to plan. You have to plan. Understand that destiny is time sensitive. Destiny is time sensitive. Everything you want to achieve. 
has no allocation of time. You are just playing with your life. You are just playing with your life. Add time to your vision. That's planning. Vision plus time allocation equals to what? Planning. That is fulfillment. Amen? Number four. Ensure to subject the vision to continuous reviews. Continuous what? Continuous reviews. Don't wait five months before you go back to one thing that you wanted to do. Hey, every day, read it. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. Every day, look at someone say, every day read it. Continuous reviews. Look at verse 2. Look at the verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. And make it plain upon tables that he may render read it. So every day you must read your vision. Revisit the vision in your heart, in your spirit. Ponder over it. Whatever you want to achieve this year, keep pondering over it. Ponder over it. Memorize it. Read it. Establish it in your spirit. Am I talking to somebody? Submit your passion to reading and rereading. Look at things again. Look at things again. Haven't you seen a color that is blue and you looked at it very well and you realized it wasn't blue? Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody? Look at things again. It will shock you that when you look at things again, you will see things differently. Even the Bible that we read, every day when we read it again and again, we find something different. Messages that I preach, when I preach in other places, I preach it differently. Am I talking to somebody? What does revision or review do? What does revision or review do? Three things here. Continue review intensifies fire and passion in the vision pursuit. Continuous review intensifies fire and passion in the vision pursuit. The more you look at what God has put in your spirit to achieve, passion is increased. Praise the Lord. Passion is what? Passion is increased. Passion is increased. That is why you cannot be an architect and you are studying biology. No. Isn't there a contrast? For an architect, you have to be looking at buildings Surveying, praise the Lord, the medical doctor, and every day you are watching farming. Where you are going, what has farming got to do with medicine? Praise the Lord. So where you are going, begin to look at things. You are trusting God for land. Always look at land. You are trusting God for a huge building. Look at building. You are trusting God to become like this person, become like that. You have to look at things. That increases your passion to pursue it. Don't look at things in the opposite direction. Am I talking to somebody? Number 4B. Continuous review deepens understanding. It deepens your understanding. The more you read, the more you talk about your vision. The more you look at your vision, the more you understand things better. And understanding is what guarantees undertaking. The more you revisit and reread what God is saying to you, understanding is clearer. Understanding is clearer. For C, continuous reviews facilitate possible readjustments. Am I going too fast? Continuous reviews facilitate possible readjustments. Of action plan where necessary. Continuous review facilitates possible readjustment. Readjustment of action plan where necessary. It helps you to look at what you have been doing, whether results are being produced or not. Amen. Vision. 
is fixed, but planning is flexible. What God wants me to do is a constant. How to get it done is a variable. So planning is very important. Am I talking to somebody? May we plan for everything that comes. There was one man of God. I watched him on Kofi TV. He's called Reverend Obotu. And they were interviewing him. I, I, he intrigues me. It's very fascinating. To the extent that he has his own graveyard prepared when he dies. How many of you saw that interview on Kofi TV? He has his graveyard, dark, built a house, and the graveyard is already prepared when he dies. So no Ebusuya Mansubia. He's left money, liquid cash in an account for his barrier. The wife and the kids are the signatories to it. So Kofi asked him why. I said, also for this is Ghana. When he said this is Ghana, I shook my head. He said, This is Ghana. When you die and you don't plan your life, your life can be scattered. Your children can become poor. And I've seen rich men who died and their children had nothing because they didn't plan. Praise the Lord. So I was talking about it to my friend, Sophie Sammy, and he was telling me that the wife asked him, so when you die, what will your children inherit? He says, I will, I'll, I'll give my, my daughter this TV. He says that he, he, he has only TV, so... You leave that. But you will be blessed mightily. If you shout amen, you are the one that I'm talking to. At your death, there will be enough that can take off your family for the next 200 years. The one that received the declaration is the one that I'm talking to. Wave your hands and shout yes! If this can happen, you must plan for it. Plan your life. Praise the Lord. I said, what? Plan your life. I told MS, I'll get, I'll come back at about 8 o'clock with the first flight from Takrade. Make sure you iron this suit, put it down. Iron my singlet, iron my boxer, put my socks down, put my, put this down, put it When I came here, I've done everything. All that I needed to do is to pray, go and freshen up and come pick this one where, pick that one, pick this one, and I'm coming to church. Planning. Plan. You're already late in life and now you are wasting 20 minutes to find what to wear and 20 minutes to find what to match with. Planning. Planning. Look at someone say, plan your life. 2020! Plan your life! Plan your life. Number five, ensure that you run with a vision. Ensure that you run with a vision. This year, 2020, is for runners. This year is not a year to give your years to people. You will be dragged behind. This year is for runners. Praise the Lord. I said this year is for what? People are blessed in Ghana. When you go to, when you go to Takura, the young, 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 young boys and girls are millionaires. They work with the oil. Young, young boys, 21, 22, 25. Young, young girls. They are millionaires. They are millionaires. They are running. They are running. I want to infuse a running spirit in you. When you are a runner, you don't look behind though. I don't know why you concentrate on your life, your life on what people say so much to the extent that you have left your life in the hands of people to run it for you. This year is not, you see, to hell with anybody who says whatever. You are running your vision. You are running your life. You are running your life. Sister Informa was sharing with me this Wednesday how with 1,000 Ghana CD, she can take people from this church to go to Nigeria and buy things and you will produce 5,000 out of it. I said, what? She said even 500 Ghana, 500 Ghana. She can take you to Nigeria and when you, you have just 500 Ghana, you can make profit from it. Running. Running. If you are waiting to have $50,000 before you start your own business, then you will wait forever. Because no man will give you 
except you have worked for the man one year. Even that one, he will give you just 50, 50 Ghana. Running. Look at someone say running. Am I talking to some runners here? It is not possible to fulfill a vision you are not ready to run with it. You are not ready to run with it. Run with a vision. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. Run with your vision. Whatever God has placed in your heart to achieve. Whatever God has put in your spirit. Every dream that God has put in your in your heart. Run with it. I get excited when I see a, a queer post a, a Saturday meal. A brodier and some crazy Kobe. And run. Start your own restaurant. I get excited when I see that they post her shit up. That is running, running. Stop putting useless videos on your WhatsApp and put your own shit up that you are making. Run with it. Don't wait for a shop before you start your business. Use your bedroom as your shop. Run with it. Run with your vision. Otherwise, you become hungry. These days, the men are very chisel. They won't give you teku or snapper. Am I talking to somebody? Run with the vision. If, if you are here and your boyfriend, your lover gave you 2,000 Ghana, lift up your hands, I'll clap for you. They don't even have it. You can't depend on men anymore. Because they are more broke than you. Slap your and say, run with your vision. Run with your vision. Run with it. Start small. Anything you see big, start small. Anything you see big, start small. Anything you see big, start small. Anything you see big. This year, Greater West, they are going to do it at Trade Fair. Quietly, quietly, they have put up over 50,000 seat at church. Quietly. So, impact is not in loudness. Hey, you can be very quiet. Nobody sees what you are doing by small by small. Small by small. You are making 20 Ghana profit, 40 Ghana profit, 50 small by small. And you put the money, you run it, you put it, and you run it, you invest it. You, that is how life is made. You can't be dependent on anybody. Run with your vision. Go to Makola and sell things. Buy things. Store reject. Go and buy it and sell it. If what you are wearing is more expensive than the money in your, in your account, you are a very poor person. Am I teaching good here? Start small and end big. Start small and end big. Run with the vision. Shake somebody. Shake the person. Run with your vision. Take note of this. Vision that is not pursued is not possessed. Hmm? Vision is that is not pursued is not what? 5B Vision only gains motion with action. Vision that is not pursued is not possessed. Number two, vision only gains motion with action. Am I talking to somebody? Hey. You don't have money to rent a shop. Spring test, you pay 40,000 Ghana. Use your hall as the shop. Knock on people's doors and take small, small things to them and sell. Vision that gains exploits, that gains motion is with action. If you don't pursue it, you are not permitted to Possess it. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it will shock you. I'll be one of the most powerful prophets in Africa and the world. And I'll, I'll be driving Uber attached to it. It will shock you. It will shock you that you'll find me in a restaurant and I'll be the head chef. Sh seven. It will shock you. This year is a year for strategic thinkers. If you sit down and wait for God to come. You will sit forever. Meet God halfway. Meet God halfway. Somebody say, Meet God halfway. Run with a vision. Show me a man who says he has a vision from God. It will die in stagnation 
without any action. The vision will die in stagnation without any action. You keep on thinking about new stars that you have to sow. And your account is zero. Keep it up. Keep it up. Anything, 5C, that works out must be worked at. Say plan. Run. Plan and run. And if you are running, anything that works out must be worked at. Praise the Lord. So plan and run. And if you are running, work on it. Anything that works out, anything that works out must be worked out. No matter how strong the vision is, what is not worked out never works out. What is not worked out never works out. So whatever you are doing, work at it. If you work at it, it will work out. Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody? Success is 1% inspiration. 99% perspiration. You see the way I'm sweating air condition? Huh? I preach on Friday. I close 4 a.m. I woke up at 9 a.m. I prepared this message from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Before preparing for last night. Because I knew that if I finish last night and come in with the first flight, there's no way I can prepare. So whatever you want to achieve, if you want it to work out, work at it. If you have not worked at it, you are not permitted for it to work out. And it will never work out until you have worked at it. Am I talking to somebody? These things I'm saying is not coming from my spirit. I received the inspiration and I wrote it down. So, success is 1% inspiration. 99% perspiration. Bill Gates, up to today, sits his back on the ground 14 hours. And he's still studying on how to become rich. I said, this man, this man, what else do you want to give? Elijah Dangote still reads books that informs him on international trade. Last year, he was still studying in a university for one year course on how to do human relation. The richest man in Africa. He is, he is empowering and making his life better. And you, the biggest man in your village, you have stopped going to school because you have done schooling. Am I talking to somebody? Look at somebody and say, work at it. Am I teaching this morning? There are many gifted, frustrated people because ideas alone are not enough. Many gifted, frustrated people because ideas alone are not what? You must back the vision with action that is not passive but active. Action. Action. I said to myself, when I come back from my trip, I will hit the road like a crazy man. My, one of my mentors in the teaching ministry, Jihan, Pastor Paul Adefaraso, and Pastor Paul Ineche, all of them have over 100,000 people in their church. Every day, Monday to Friday, they are on the street doing evangelism. Every day. Every day. They are on the street doing evangelism. 100,000 seated church. From Monday to Friday, they're on the street doing evangelism. I said, wow. Indeed. No wonder. If you sit down, you will never get the results. Look at someone and say, go out there and work. Go out there and work. And I want to encourage every young man, every young woman here. Go out there and work. Make some money. Improve yourself. Better yourself. Empower yourself. Don't sit and wait for your guardian angel to come. That helper you have been praying for, that helper needs your help. That helper needs your help. That helper
according to your head. Look at a man called Jerry Fowell. Say Jerry Fowell. He was the founder of Liberty University. I'm wrapping up. Pastor the church for five years with five people. Jerry Fowell. He pastor the church for five years with five people. Until he knocked on people's doors with his church five members. They knocked on people's doors until the church became 20,000 people. He became an advisor of the U.S. president in his lifetime. What, what a work. What a runner. What a runner. Many people that expect the big things in life are those who are sitting. Many people that expect the greatest honor are those who are doing less. I have since learned many people whose mouth is open and they want every good thing in life to come to them are those who are doing nothing. Work! Run with your vision. Whatever God has placed in your heart, run with it. Yesterday, I, I went to my, my, the church I preach is for my spiritual father and he bought that building, the top. The top is a church. So I said, Papa, what are you using the down for? He said, look at that. That is a car wash. It's mine. So we are doing a spa here. I said, Papa, you are doing a spa? I said, yeah, I'm doing a spa here. Barbering saloon. I said, ah, Bishop. I said, yeah. Then he said to me, I'm going to Market Circle to do evangelism. I said, oh, you are doing a spa? You are doing car wash? You are still doing evangelism? No wonder you are a blessed man. There's one man of God, he says that he will keep his money, he will never use his money. So his money in a Zenith account is like my head. He doesn't want to touch it. You are a poor man. Run with the vision. Say run with the vision. Invest that one Ghana CD you have. Invest it. Invest it. Am I blessing somebody here? The next six minutes I'll be out of your way. Number six. Ensure to uphold patience with the vision. Maintain patience. Maintain patience. Aga. Bas. Maintain patience. Ebe fawate. So what could invest in? Who could use this? Which year did you finish? Eh? 2015. Oh, 2015. Which course did you do in UCC? Management studies. So you're a graduate. Second class lower, second class upper. Eh? Jose. Jose. Second class lower. That means you're a very brilliant guy. Clap your hands for him. He's a graduate playing keyboard, also doing part-time teaching. Doing very well. Wait for it. He can be tempted that he's a graduate. So his friends are working in banks. His friends are working in very serious institutions. And he's only a part-time teacher playing keyboard in church. Maintain patience. Okay? So whatever God must give you, he will exceed your limits. Am I talking to somebody? Me see, when your time is up, God will pay you with compensation. God will pay you with compensation. So maintain patience. Look at someone say maintain patience. I didn't ever fall, I be far. Maintain patience. Maintain, young man, maintain patience. Ministry is not for boys. Ministry, you see, this church, you were here when we started the church. You have seen, and still, every day I keep looking fresh. Some people look at me and say, ah, how are you able to survive this? Some, some of my members say, Papa, it's, oh, we are we are there. It's me. It's grace, patience. Ministry is not a how you take your time. Take your time. Let God prepare you. Don't go ahead of your time. Ministry is patience. If you want to look at a man of God who has a bigger church than you and you think you are anointed than him, then you go and seek a good himself. And you destroy your future. Because all that glitters is no good. You see a friend of yours getting married. So you too, you want a boyfriend and say, marry me, marry me, marry Young girl who is dating a guy every day. He sees, she sees the girl and the guy says, marry me. Could you marry me? Oh, marry me. If you don't marry me, I'm going to die. <laughs> you are getting mad. You are getting mad. It's not your time. Look at us and maintain patience. Maintain patience. Maintain patience. 
Somebody's time is not your time. Somebody's time is not your season. Am I talking to somebody? Maintain patience. Destiny is not the same. It will be on the time. Let me, this is my wife's best, best friend, Stand Up Mary. This is my wife's best friend. She was a maid of honor. Clap your hands for my wife's best friend. She happened to be my long distant cousin too. They went to the same university. They have been friends for so many years. My wife has been married this June for eight years. This June will be eight years. Please, are you married? Are you boarded? Abra Abono, on Kase, my best friend. Wawari, my first born, AKD, seven years. Into no so change in there. I did made of honor for her. So I asked her how to get married. Are you out of your mind? Maintain patience. Maintain patience. Your birth mark is different. Oh. Maintain patience. Adio, be made to me the Tiajin. Who try to be who? Interpret it to Moses so he can understand the tree. Look at someone say, maintain patience. Maintain patience. Why must you uphold patience? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. Am I blessing you this morning? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. My time is up. Why? Vision speak at the end. Vision, speak at the end. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. Hey, one day we will look back after 10 years. We see ourselves in a mega amphitheater with hospital buildings everywhere. We will remember where we came from. Hey, if God does not give you a story, there cannot be any glory. Some of you want the glory with no story attached to it. And God said, I can't bless you and give you a glory without a story. So now God is writing our script. How can you be a marriage counselor if you, don't, if you have not been through the, the highs and lows of marriage? How can you counsel people if you have not been through relationship problems? You have to go through it so you can explain. Hey, my sister, slow down. I've been there before. My brother, take your time. I have been through it before and I survived it. If I survived it, you can also make it. Fishing speaks at the end. I'm telling you, there are pastors who began ministry many years ago. Today, they are in the beer parlor drinking beer. Am I talking to somebody? Last two weeks, they saw a pastor who used to be on TV, Metro TV, Saturday, 9 a.m. They saw him frustrated. His church has closed down. A pastor who, who we used to learn how to sing. Hey, 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 hey. In the 1990s, he has sold the church building. To an Okonfu. Maintain patience. I said your destiny fabric is wired different. Am I teaching good this morning? Maintain patience. Maintain patience. Maintain patience. Some of you, uh, I'm a big girl. I went to university. I won't eat Gary. I asked for Gary. I don't want to eat it. What? Come and see last week the way I did chop Gary for my house. The way I did chop Ebba. We call it Infante Gallo Boy. Come and see with Mokopa. Moko, moko, moko. You are big, so what? We have traveled all over the world. I still eat Gallo Boy. Maintain patience. Jollof rice has cholesterol. Too much oil to kill you. Too much. Anything shine, shine, shine. Kills quick, 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 quick. Clap your hands for Papa. He's teaching you. Maintain patience. Borrow me five minutes. Borrow me five minutes. Vision manifest for those who await their manifestation. Understand that impatience is a major killer of vision. Impatience. Impatience can make you organize alternatives. Abraham, God said Isaac. Today, the problem between Iraq, Iran, the problem we have, the fight we have between Christians and Muslims is because Abraham was impatient. He listened to the advice of the wife and went in for Hagar. They produced Ishmael. Later on, the wife turned her back on Hagar. Please, don't seek for alternatives. Maintain patience. I have a lot to say. I have a lot to tell you. But because of the principle that we want to keep to time, stand to your feet and let's close. Maintain patience.
Maintain patience. Maintain patience. Have I blessed you today? Maintain patience. Lift your hands wherever you are. Lift your hands. Maintain patience, oh. Maintain patience. Before when I come to church and I see empty chairs, I'll be crying. So you see on my face. Papa is worried. Because God told me one day, he said, you, are you a builder? You are trying to do it by yourself. On Saturday, on Saturday morning, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., I'll be making calls. Come to church, come to church, come to church, come to church. And they will not come. 